So here we are on the 17th episode of the season. The 17 curse, in other words. Okay, so to shortly explain this, some people have lately discovered certain numbers in an episode that have been rather notorious. Taking the 8th episode of a season, for instance, had the obvious overhated Mysterious Meredith Will from Season 2, Look Before You Sleep, which I still can't grasp why people hate it, and Season 3's Apple Family Reunion, which I just thought it was only a dull episode. Rarity Takes Manhattan broke that curse, thankfully, though I can't guarantee that to everyone, since some people may not have liked that episode. Then there's 21, Season 1's Over a Barrel, and Season 2's Dragon Quest. Obviously, Season 3 didn't have that because, you know, 13 episodes and all. I didn't really hate these two, though I was pretty fussy on how many of the missed opportunities were on Spike on Dragon Quest, and Over a Barrel was just framed incorrectly. So back to 17. Season 1's Stairmaster was my most hated episode of the season because of its poor writing, obnoxiousness of the CMC, and going nowhere with them, and nearly killing off our main protagonist. The sooner Season 4 ends, the sooner I'll rip that episode to shreds. And there's Hearts and Hooves Day, which doesn't need to be further explained given that what's been said already from the fandom. So it is no surprise here at all when I say that I didn't like this episode. Some Pony to Watch Over Me has a huge problem shoved right up its ass from the very beginning, and it doesn't take into effect until we're later down the line. As the episode begins, Apple Bloom is given a chance to live alone on the farm while the rest of the family are set to make a trip down to a distant village for a pie delivery. Now this right here is a great concept because of Apple Bloom's potential character growth, and for the most part, while she's alone, she does a great job at finishing her assigned chores and simultaneously being responsible. Since there's no one else here, I get to make all the decisions. If I want to listen to music, I can. If I want to read a book, I can. If I want to just stand here in the kitchen talking to myself, I can. I can relate to this when I was 12 years old and when I was being left alone. And it was a great and exciting experience. All the privacy you have to yourself, all the freedom you have to yourself, and all the opportunity to show how much you can handle yourself overall. And for the most part, the first quarter definitely delivered on that topic so well. This comes from someone who's the youngest member of the family. It would have been great just right there to see Apple Bloom take action and potentially develop her character. That isn't until Applejack rushes back home, ditches her job, and pampers the hell out of Apple Bloom so much because of how insecure she feels. Okay, so instead of an episode about self-reliability, it's now being about being overprotective. This is what shoved up the episode's ass so hard. It has several missed opportunities here to progress the main characters. There were topics you can dig up and potentially make up for on the hating trend with Applejack or Apple Bloom. I personally want them to develop and have something more outside of what they were known for. I mean, Jesus! Applejack was my first favorite character in the series until it went downhill afterwards, and that's depressing for me. And out of all of these progressive concepts, this episode abandoned them all. I couldn't find anything more disappointing in the episode after that. At least with Twilight Time, it establishes its topics while remaining harmless despite how clunky the script was. If this episode was supposed to be about relying on self-independence, that's fine. But if you're going to add a topic about being overprotective, then you're not properly devoting to Apple Bloom's character growth because it's not allowing herself to be dependent in the first place. Self-independence and overprotectiveness are two different topics that can't mix together in one. Yes, the topics are relevant, but overprotectiveness is just going to dominate over self-reliability. This episode should have been just about Apple Bloom taking care of herself, alone. But instead, they tried to shove in another topic which overthrows what the episode was originally set up for. So because of how irritated she was, Apple Bloom uses her friends to distract Applejack by impersonating her while she leaves the house and embarks to take the carts to the village. This then leads up to when she encounters a three-headed monster in some kind of volcanic swamp called the Shimmera. This creature has the head of a tiger, a goat, and a snake, all of which had some something potentially threatening. But for the most part, they just come off stupid and the results indicate them being stupid during an action scene. Most of the time, we see Apple Bloom managing herself on what to do, and for the most part, I was fine with... But then she gets cornered and wishes help from his sister. Any last words? I really wish my sister were here! <sighs> well, so much for trying to prove how self-independent you are. And what's even worse, we're given this line from the Shimmera. You're lucky, you know. You've got no idea what it's like to have a sister constantly looking over your shoulder. And that's never used again. Apple Bloom could have had the chance to share her issues with the Shimmera and possibly come to a closure, but instead we have to have another action scene with Applejack rescuing her. This, once again, goes against what Apple Bloom was set up for, and what's even worse is that at the end of the episode, she's potentially grounded for the entire scenario as if it's her fault, and Applejack is only going to rely on her sister by only leaving her at home instead of relying on her taking care of distant 
tasks. On a side note, this is briefly why I wasn't as discouraged with the moral in which Joshua Scorcher and Mysterious Mr. Enter were. Trust in her sister after taking the risk of her life over pies was actually reevaluated, given that Applejack was actually upset about what Apple Bloom's attempts were. But what's problematic here is that this is entirely Applejack's fault to begin with by leaving her own job and preventing Apple Bloom's self reliability in the first place. And because she's only going to be counted on by being at home alone, how will she grow to make delivery tasks when she gets older? That's not going to help her develop at all. There are some things I was able to appreciate. Many have pointed out that since her parents are dead, it would seem more natural that Applejack would be this overprotective. While that is true, however, Applejack's parents were never mentioned to begin with, and they never will be mentioned because it's something the show just isn't allowed to talk about. I only rely on what the show offers alone and no external material in order for the show to stand on its own. So her parents being dead don't really count to me, but if this is what you perceive it as, that's fine. Otherwise, it's still an issue to me though, since it's what corrupted the plot of the episode. I was also surprised that a musical number was added, only to be cut off. Since the season has had several musical numbers before, it was nice to see how it would parody itself in this scene. That being said though, this episode was a mess, and it hurts for me to say that because of all of what it had going for, only resulting in relentless outcomes. What fucking waste. Hopefully in a later episode, more progression might ensue. So until next time, I'll catch you all in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>